first one's longer. Cut it. Two, three. All right. Congratulations, you got one shot. My name's Chad Lee. I'm the director of the Grain and Forage Center of Excellence. I have the honor and privilege of working with a lot of really, really good people at the University of Kentucky and working for a lot of really good people in this room and around the state. Welcome, as I said, to the Grain and Forage Center of Excellence ribbon cutting, but welcome to the Research and Education Center. This is a much larger facility. It began back in 1925. It involves all aspects of agriculture, and we're committed to all aspects of agriculture. So welcome to that. Welcome, more specifically, to the Seamer Milling Company Conference Center. Welcome, even more specifically, to the Kentucky Corn Conference Room. And if you'll notice, the sound panels, acoustical panels, those are all made with soy-based foam purchased by our Kentucky Soybean Board. And so in this room, So I think this room does serve as just one example of multiple facets of agriculture working together uh, to make things better for, for the state. You know, the profession of providing safe, reliable food is as old as, well, it's as old as civilization itself. In fact, it's because we figured out how to do agriculture that we, we have civilizations. And, Part of what is unique about agriculture today is there are aspects about what we do that trace all the way back to those early generations and those, those early ancestors of ours that figured out how to domesticate animals and how to domesticate plants and how to reliably provide food for their families and their neighbors. And so from that standpoint, we, we reach way, way back into history to celebrate that aspect of it. And at the same time, we recognize that we are reaching forward to better produce food, to better produce feed and fiber and fuel, to do those things more efficiently, more sustainably. And as we go forward, we recognize that there will be more and more people, more and more mouths to feed, and we have greater and greater responsibility to be good stewards of the environment as well. And I think we celebrate all of those things today. For many generations, farmers throughout Kentucky have trusted the University of Kentucky. You trusted us to put this facility here. You trusted us to put the initial building here, to bring people here to work at this facility. And again, you're trusting us today and this ribbon cutting is, again, just a celebration of that trust, and I want to thank you for that. We have many, many partners in this process, and I think it's fitting that at this time that I recognize some of those members as we go through. I want to start by recognizing the members of the Kentucky Ag Development Board who, through their uh, $15 million grant, allowed us to get started on this process and put this building together. Members of the Kentucky Ag Finance Board are here as well. We've got Pat Clements with Clements Ag Supply. Uh, the Cook family, uh, my understanding is Milton and Betty are here today representing their family. We've got the Dinder Fund, Miss Barbara Hurt with Dinder Fund. Uh, we have Farm Credit Mid-America, Mark Barker and some others. We've got H&R AgriPower, I saw Mr. Hunt earlier today. Uh, Independence Bank, Wayne Mattingly. The Kentucky Association of County Ag Agents. So far, I've seen uh, Clint Hardy, Kurt Judy, Tom Miller, and uh, a few others in here as well. But the Kentucky Cattlemen's Association, Dave Maples, the Kentucky Corn Growers Association, uh, starting with Laura Noth and Adam Andrews, and then uh, Mark Roberts, Richard Preston, Joseph Sisk, and a few others that I saw in the room. The Kentucky Corn Growers UK Ag Benefactor Program which has over 60-some, 70-some members at this point and growing as well. The Kentucky Corn Promotion Council, which uh, with, with Ray Allen Mackey, uh, Russell Schwenke, Richard Strode, um, Philip McCown, and Joseph Sisk is also on that list. We've got the Kentucky Department of Agriculture, the Ag Tag Program. Uh, Ryan Quarles is here today with us. We've got the Kentucky Farm Bureau Federation, 
Mark Haney, Eddie Melton, Sherry Fer Sharon Furchis, Fritz, and Drew Graham, and I'm probably missing somebody in there, the Kentucky Forage and Grassland Council, Clayton Geralds, the Kentucky Small Grain Growers Council. What you don't see in this room is that they donated $250,000 for graduate student housing, Mr. President, and that will allow us to keep some students here longer as they work on practical applications. And they've chosen to name that after our current wheat breeder, David Van Sanford. We have um, in the room the Kentucky Soybean Promotion Board. In addition to funding our research and funding these sound panels that I mentioned, they've also paid for the carpet, which is soy based and they paid for the cushions on the office chairs, which are also soybean-based as well. Uh, Debbie Ellis, Ray Wagner, and Becky Kinder, uh, among several of the growers, uh, one or two that could not make it with us today. Um, the Maddox family, John Maddox, Buddy Maddox, who helped with the restoration of our, one of our original no-till planters, uh, Howard Martin of Martin Till, Sam Moore, was a member of the Act Development Board when this process went through, uh, was instrumental in a lot of those early discussions. We appreciate him today. Uh, Lloyd Murdoch, who donated to the program in addition to all that he's done here as well. Monty Parrish, uh, Mr. and Mrs. W.O. Payne, uh, the Peterson Farms, I saw Bernard earlier in the room. Rankin Powell and his wife, Rankin, Many of you know Rankin as a county extension agent. Some of you know Rankin as a farmer. He was an early adopter of no-till and he donated the planter that we see out here, the one that was available for restoration, um, among some other things that he's done as well with his family. Uh, Aaron Redding with Homestead Farms. Aaron couldn't make it today. Seamer Milling Company for their donation. Rick, Diane, and Henry. We've also got Carl Schwenke, Stephen Locke, and several other employees that are here. The late M. Wilson Foundation, uh, William Witt and his wife, who started their professional careers here at Princeton before moving up to Lexington to main campus, uh, Robert G. Woodward. And I think I've got the primary list of donors. If I have not, somebody warn me and we'll get the rest of them mentioned as we go through. So I think at this point, <laughs> please, please let's give the donors a round of applause. When we put this concept together, we decided early on we needed to have a task force uh, of a lot of different people discussing how to put a center of excellence together, how to go about the funding, the process to make that work. A lot of those members are here today. Uh, members of that task force included, uh, includes uh, Warren Beeler, uh, the late Don Halcom, now Sam Halcom, Sam Moore, Russell Schwenke, Philip McCown, Trip Furches, Eddie Melton, Clayton Gerald, uh, Bill Payne, Richard Heath, Paul Hornback, Pat Clements, Ryan Bivens, Debbie Ellis, Keith Tapp, uh, Laura Noth, Tom Miller, Clint Hardy, Chris Toich, Kerry Knott, uh, Dr. Todd Pfeiffer, Steve Workman, Drew Graham, Dean Cox, uh, John Grove, Ryan Quarles, and Mark Haney on here as well. And so this group of people met numerous times to develop the concept and, and put those ideas together. And before we applause for them, I, I want to go back a step further and say the original conversation about a center of excellence began with Don Halcom and Lloyd Murdoch. Now, Don would tell us that it was Lloyd's idea, and Lloyd would say, no, it was Don's idea. And uh, Mr. President, those were the best ideas, it's when you have the partners working together in that regard. Um, obviously, Don is not here today. His family is. Meredith, Sam, John, Stephanie, Sarah, and their grandchildren, Everett, Sydney, Lizzie, George, and Kate. We appreciate them here today. And of course, Lloyd and, and his wife are here as well. We appreciate them for being with us today and for thinking bigger than I think we all ever thought we could think in this process. We have some officials with us today. We appreciate you being here. We recognize part of this partnership as we're, we're all working together 
uh, for the betterment of Kentucky. So Ag Commissioner Ryan Quarles, Senator Paul Hornback, Representative Heath, uh, Representative Rudy, Senator Humphreys, Representative Belcher, uh, Senator Webb, Representative Miles, uh, Representative Prunty, Representative Thomas, Senator Mills, and then from uh, Senator McConnell's office is the field rep Morgan Alvey, and from Jamie Comer's office is the field rep Amelia Wilson. And hopefully I have listed everyone across the state and federal on that. Oh, great. I also... <laughs> Okay. This, while this facility has impact all across the world, and you're going to hear more about that as we go on, this is also a, a local community, and it has impact right here on Princeton, and so we're, we're thankful that uh, Princeton's Mayor Dakota Young is with us today as well. Uh, we have, we're fortunate to have two UK Board Trustee members here today. Uh, Elizabeth McCoy and Joe Bowen. We also have a couple of other administration officials. In addition to our president, uh, we have Tom Harris, our VP for External Relations, Brent Piper in the Office of Philanthropy, and Mike Ritchie also in the Office of Philanthropy as well. Go ahead and give them a hand. Okay, in addition to those, We've got um, H. Barlow with the Kentucky Dairy Development Council that uh, is, is here today. We've got our FFA educator, Ben Previtt. If I, I have not seen Ben yet, but Ben and the Hopkins County FFA crew did the actual restoration of the planter. So, so we had several different people involved in that process, and I think they did a fine job with it. You know, it's somewhat interesting, we're going to talk about state-of-the-art agriculture and the latest developments, and at the same time, we are recognizing an implement that's now a few years old, uh, Commissioner Quarles, but represented innovation in this area and uh, represented innovation at that time. And I think that's a, a legacy we all can appreciate. Our architects from JRA, um, I saw Rob and Inga here today, so we appreciate that. From A&K Construction, those folks have been working like crazy the last few days to, uh, to, get, us to get this place ready for the ribbon cutting. Um, I saw Josh and Scott earlier, so many of the subcontractors are in the room as well. This building is not completely finished yet. We have a little bit more to go, but that's true like most relationships. We have a little bit more to go on there, right? So uh, from Capital Projects, we've got Brian Hare in the room. We've got, um, we've got our faculty and staff here at the Research and Education Center. The faculty and staff who had to live and work and be productive in and move offices and go to cubicles and share lab space and everything else. I've got some glares coming already that's bringing back memories. Look at the new offices. Everybody happy? Yes. All right, so we've got them in the room today. They've been super troopers throughout this process. We appreciate that. I've got a couple more folks I need to mention. I'm going to mention Ryan Scott. Uh, Ryan moved everybody multiple times. He was here late last night sweeping the floors one more time. Uh, here early this morning double checking things as well. And. Uh, You'd think we had something special going on, but that's just what Ryan does on a regular basis anyhow, so we appreciate that. The ribbon cutting planning committee was Colette Laurent, who did all of the local stuff here, uh, Laura Skillman, Dave Kessler, and then finally we need to recognize John Grove, who's the director of the overall research and education center, for helping everybody walk through this process as we go through. With that, give them a hand.